Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I am here with my analyst extraordinaire, Brother Roz, and we are actually trying something a little bit different than what we've ever done before. This is Brother Roz's opportunity to let me know I am an idiot. We're going to have a point-counterpoint conversation here where I throw out some theories and he gets the opportunity to let me know if I am a you're an idiot or not brother Roz how are you doing today buddy oh I'm I'm looking forward to this yes now this is actually the very first one of these so it may be a little bit rough here but I am uh, a guy I think about a lot of different things and I come up with a lot of different theories Roz and you know I'll, I'll bounce some off of you and then you'll basically say you know most of the time you're an idiot and then you think about them and then you come back at me and kind of say well actually you're not wrong completely but you're still a you're an idiot so Roz I have a few different theories here that I want to bounce off of you Okay. Are you ready for this? Have you lost your mind? <laughs> yes, I have lost my mind. Okay, so the Dallas Cowboys, who believe in their own guys, as Stephen Jones says, okay, doesn't believe in signing players from outside of the organization and so on, and believes in the draft. And in this draft, they felt they could fill in all the holes that they had. One of the holes that they thought that they could do something really good with was with Jake Ferguson. Jake Ferguson, who this past week um, rated out as the number one cowboy this past week against the Eagles, which that may or may not be good because the Cowboys lost. But in my mind, I think that Jake Ferguson can give us more than Jason Witten did the last five years that he's with the Cowboys and maybe has the potential to be a really good tight end. Am I an idiot or not? Do we have a 50, 50 button? No, you, you, you either tell me I'm an idiot or you agree with it. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to call you an idiot on this one you're an idiot okay why am i an idiot on it because everything you want every single thing that you could possibly want out of a tight end mm -hmm. run block pass block pass route receiving uh you know just placement on the field uh you know the the way he the way he plays the game Ferguson put it all on the field against Philly. Okay. So, it, it, Jason it, it, Witten. Yes. He did that just by showing up. Okay. All right. Well, let me ask you then this one. Let's 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 change this around a little bit because maybe that's a harder one to to go ahead and judge because of oh the no, of the I career. can totally judge that. Okay. Uh, all right, but but it's still early because we're talking about. Uh, we're only talking about six games into a career. In the first game, they only played him like nine plays. But he's progressing rather well. And this is projecting, and I know it's hard to project. But I'm sitting here thinking because I am what is known as a jack-of-all-trades and a master of none. But the rest of that saying that most people don't know is it's better to have a jack-of-all-trades than a master of one because you have somebody who can do it all. Whereas that one guy that can do one thing... I believe that the Cowboys, as Jay Ferguson becomes that complete player, will be more effective than Dalton Schultz because Dalton Schultz is kind of that specialist in catching the football. But I believe... Oh, hit your button. Hit your button. Hit your I'm, button. I'm an idiot? You're an idiot! <laughs> Did you just compare Dalton Schultz to Jason Witten? No, 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 I did not. I No, no, no. Because you said Ferguson is no. going to be better than Schultz. Well, yes. Well, that, okay. Well, that, yeah, okay. You well, absolutely a smart Well, that guy. was my part because I was saying that he can block and he can catch and do things well. Kind of like some of the really good tight ends that are in the NFL. You need a guy who can block and you need a guy who can catch the football. And if you can do both, then you keep the defense guessing. 
is he blocking me or do I have to cover him? Am I an idiot or not? No, you're not an idiot. But on this thing, there's a far cry from being better than uh than being being better than Schultz and being better than Witten. Okay, because Witten was basically Schultz and Jarwin together when before Jarwin went off the deep end. Mm-hmm. All right, so it, it, you have to take Schultz and Jarwin to get Ferguson to do better than both combined together. And then do it multiple years and extrapolate numbers and things to look at the end of the day. You did change things. All right. You changed my mind on Fergus. Mm-hmm. Now, he does have, like we talked about, he has football intelligence and he has mm-hmm. some other metric, you know, scores that I appreciate and I look for. Toughness. Toughness mm-hmm. is a big one. Yeah. But you're right. Six games in. It's or, yeah, it's it's six games does not make a career because if it did, RG three would be in the Hall of Fame. So, all right, moving on to the next one. How so did, wait, wait, wait. Did, did did we get a final answer? Oh no, I'm not an idiot. Yeah. On that I, one. Okay. I, no, no, I'm not an I, idiot. Okay. All right. The we'll, next we'll agree one. To disagree. The next one. The Dallas Cowboys offensive line could end up being one of the better ones in the league this year. If Tyron Smith comes back healthy the last five or six games and they play him at tackle and move Tyler Smith to guard. Right, uh, left guard. Am I an idiot? I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Come on, man. (laughs) Okay. Okay. All right. Why do you agree now, on that one? Now, I have to caveat that, though. While I may agree with your premise, mm-hmm. weren't you the one that said, how is Dallas the best offensive line by PFF rankings in 2021? Well, okay. but okay. Now, let's now, see if now. you get all your dudes on a field together. That's the, the big time. if. That's the big if. To me, okay, the the one thing you have to say, with the exception of left guard, is the offensive line has been stable by players, okay? Tyler Smith hasn't missed a game. Uh, Biotish hasn't missed a game. Zach Martin hasn't missed a game. Terrence Steele has not missed a game. The only Don't you play- wish Biotish had missed a game? Well, but you'd need to have something that's better. My premise is... Tyler Smith is a mauler, and a guard is a different position than, say, a tackle. Most people look at an offensive lineman and say, oh, it's just an offensive lineman. They're all the same. There are very few that can be ambidextrous, go from left to right, or play guard, center, and tackle. You really have a different set of skills. A guard, per se, has to go, you know, usually does more pulling. He's going to go around the tackle. He's going to be a lead blocker on sweeps. He needs to get to the second level to get to the linebackers. And when you're running game, this guy is important. A tackle is more of a guy who's kind of on an island, and his big responsibility is protecting that blind side. He's usually taking on the defensive ends, which is more of a defensive position than an offensive lineman position. Am I making any sense, or am I an idiot? Oh, you're you're making you're complete an idiot. Sense. Okay, well, I'm just still impressed with the whole uh, complete both pronunciation and enunciation of ambidextrous. Okay, I, I get one. I, you know what? I get one right a day. Okay, I get one big word right a day. So the rest of it will be all. Hey, screwed that's up. a good one to get. Okay, um, but my thinking is, if you have two really good guards, that basically helps the bad center. The weak link then becomes Biotis. Right now, Biotis is not the weakest link. Right now, it's the left guard. And if the Cowboys can get that left side together, they're going to be able to run the ball better and be able to feast with Zeke Elliott, which is something that they have not been able to do in playoff time. Am I an idiot or not? Or you said I wasn't. No, the the offensive line one is hard because... And we've talked about this, you know, since the beginning of the season. The offensive line one, I cannot argue with you because we're watching a plethora of injuries at various different parts of the line across the entire league. Mm-hmm. I, I think I told you there's 
I'd have uh, there's four or five teams that have had their entire offensive line for the majority of their games. Um, so out of 32, that's a pretty poor, you know, statistic. Uh, so if you get it right, it's not hard to be the best. Okay. All right. Um, right now, that's what the Eagles are working with. The Eagles are working with a consistent and and stable group of guys. And I'm sorry, I don't know. I, I had it somewhere. I lost it. But the point is... If you can eliminate a weak link or minimize the damage of that weak link, mm -hmm. your the grade of the entire line goes up. Okay, so I'm not an idiot yet. No, no that, I, I'm I'm just a little slow. No, but you you needed five pieces to make one point. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> With Dak Prescott, the Cowboys could be a Super Bowl favorite. Have you lost your mind? You're an idiot. Here's my reason why. Okay, let me let me give you my, my point why, and then you can rebuttal it. See, that's another one I got right too, isn't it? That's two. Two. Two for the hump day. Okay. The Dallas Cowboys offense should pick up about 10 points a game. And if that is the case, if the Cowboys can actually go through as opposed to trying to keep it close, if the Cowboys can actually score some points and get leagues, leads, it will make that defense even more effective because guys like Micah Parsons, um, Demarcus Lawrence, are going to get teams that are going to be one-dimensional. And they're going to have to pass the ball because they're trying to keep up. In which case, the defense is going to get more opportunities because they will force more three and outs and they'll get more takeaways. And by doing that, it elevates the whole team. Am I an idiot? You're an idiot! Oh, one other point too. The Dallas Cowboys... <laughs> have played the toughest schedule thus far in the NFC. Oh. Wow. Okay, I don't know what that was, but okay. That's uh that's who you're going to call. Look, Oh, um, you need to phone a friend on that one uh, because I can't. I can't be your friend on the DAC thing. Look. So, so then I'm. I'm an idiot. You're an idiot. Okay, I'm an idiot. All yeah, right. I, I asked you if you lost your mind from the beginning of that one, but look. Here's what I'm gonna say, mm -hmm. and I can't believe I'm gonna say it out loud on a on a recorded line. Um, I'm hoping you just accidentally didn't hit the button, but. Dallas has just as much chance as anybody else for the title this year. Mm-hmm. Does that what go I up with Dak Prescott as opposed to Cooper Rush? Honestly, yes, but not because of Dak. Because you could Nick Foles your way into a title mm -hmm. if you get that far with Cooper Rush at the end. Right? Let's say Dak carries you to a point and then Cooper's only got to get you the last couple games. You can play emotional and, and push through to the Super Bowl. Because um, let's be honest, that's what they did with Foles. Foles mm -hmm. might have played well, but, I mean, he's not a superstar. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, um, what I will say, though, is Dak will not be the reason you win or lose a Super Bowl. Um. He's just not that guy. You ever heard that phrase? You just you're not that guy. Okay. So um so in other words, I You're am, an idiot. I'm an idiot. Okay. Let's look at the totality of this. Yes. Right? Let's look at the totality of this. Your offense was functional and capable against certain teams with Cooper Rush in play. And you talked and we talked and others have talked about how the scheme changed. 
Yes. And the scheme took the team to the wins while the defense stepped up their game. Okay. All right. So a caveat to this is, in the Eagles game, the Cowboys would have won if Dak Prescott had been healthy and playing. Yeah, I don't. I, 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 I don't. I don't see that as a reality. The three but turnovers you can alone. Conjecture the the that confusion of the fourth down. The CD Lamb wide the hell open and couldn't get the ball to him. All right, so let's say, just hypothetically speaking, mm -hmm. you ever see the replacements? Yes. Okay, so the Love star quarterback comes in after the half, mm -hmm. or right before the half. But he was an asshole. Right, he was an ass. But the point is, the star quarterback is in. The team played different. But the offense or the defense on the other side of the field, as well as the offense, had the game plan different as well. And then when Falco came back in, then all of a sudden, you know, that was an emotional ride, but it was still a change that the other team had to make. Now, you asked me once about McCarthy. Oh no, that's that's coming up. That's coming up. That that's one of the questions. Oh, we need to go there. Okay, all right. So, all right, we'll move on beyond Dak Prescott. Okay. It, hold on. Let, let me let me let me tied to Mikey boy. Okay, all right. Well, we'll 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 go through, but here's the thing. Here's my thing. If Mike McCarthy somehow wins a Super Bowl with the Dallas Cowboys, that says more about Mike McCarthy as a coach than Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback. Am I an idiot? You're an idiot. You are my, I told you I wasn't going to be able to say it. You are an idiot. Okay. Well, here's here's my thought on this. For years we kept you hearing. Think all no, you no, want. hold. Wait, wait. Here's smart. my here's my argument. Because for years they always said Mike McCarthy. You only won one Super Bowl. You've had Aaron Rodgers all those years. How could you not win one? If he wins one without Aaron Rodgers, was it Aaron Rodgers the reason why he won the Super Bowl, or was it the team that he coached? being a complete team. So now, let me break this down. <laughs> should should I right, go ahead gonna, and say it? You're an idiot! <laughs> this is how we do in the Army. It's yes. called, let me break it down for you, Barney style. Oh, Barney style. Now I'm in trouble. Okay. Let, let me turn around here and see the full picture here. Okay, you break right. it down. Man, I wish I had some graphics. You got Aaron Rodgers, you got Dak Prescott, you got Mike McCarthy, and your premise is that coming back, your quarterback not only is going to get you to the Super Bowl, but Mike McCarthy is going to coach his way past the legacy of Aaron Rodgers. Here's the thing. What NFL coach, Roz, has won Super Bowls in two different teams and going to the Dallas Cowboys which have been dysfunctional as we are reminded by Eagle fans for 26 I'm, years I'm pretty Mike, sure that uh I'm pretty sure that Belichick has but no he has not won Super Bowls with other teams not as a head coach 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 right you could take lots of guys that have won Super Bowls you know on other locations I mean, okay. You can go. You. you okay. can go the, well, um, see, I, the Shanahan I, tree right there and do that. Right, but you you're ask you're asking me to analyze a question. Okay, and the but question but but the, 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 here's the thing. I'm just analyzing with the Let, let's be real happened. here. You're dealing with Jerry Jones as the owner slash coach in situation Shh. where he has to be front and center. Shh. A guy who had a Super Bowl back to back winning coach and said, "Man, I don't get enough credit." If he can actually win a Super Bowl with the Dallas Cowboys, a dysfunctional franchise when it comes to players and personnel, a team that literally got a fifth-round draft pick for Amari Cooper, okay? That says a hell of a lot about the coach, especially since he was on the hot seat where literally Sean Payton is supposed to be on speed dial. So, let me ask you a question. Ask away. For you to win this argument mm -hmm. and not be an idiot at this game at given time, okay, you have to do one of two things. 
You have to remove Dak Prescott. I have or to. Or you have to. Or you have to admit that the quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, was instrumental, which makes Dak Prescott a very critical piece, and not just Mike McCarthy. What? But see, just be, you, but but see, I'm going to have no, no, they're no, either no. together. But or they're but not. see. If it's only about the quarterback, then why is it that Russell Wilson only won a Super Bowl when he had the number one defense? Why is it that oh, Aaron Rodgers oh, hasn't is. won it hasn't won it since he had a great defense back with Mike McCarthy and stuff? It's a team thing, wait, but wait, it's wait, not wait, always wait, wait, about wait, 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 wait. just that again, being. Say that again. What's that? Say it again for the people in the back that didn't hear you. It, it's a team sport that people don't seem to understand that it's beyond just the quarterback. And you can have great players and great talent, okay? But if you can't get them to work together, then you're not winning shit. Now, there's also luck that's involved, the ball's got to bounce your way. And sometimes you need to get a couple of calls that go your way as opposed to it. The chances of winning a Super Bowl are slim and none. You have to have so many things that line up. But it's not about just having a great quarterback. You have to have a coach that knows how to use that great quarterback. That's my premise. And so if we sit here and look at it, no, see, and Aaron Rodgers. That premise right there is 100% accurate. If, if we sit you. here and look at the totality and say Aaron Rodgers is the greatest quarterback ever, well, he can't be that oh, Super Bowl no. champion. I would never do that, no, anyways, I'm, I'm, even as just, a Green Bay owner. Okay, all right. But you, you follow what I'm saying, that he's one of the greatest of all times. He can't do it on his own. That's where coaching matters. No, but I'll tell you, those last minute Hail Marys in the end zone are just beautiful. They are. Everything but again, beautiful. you still have to have the coaching that ends up getting this all there. And the coach is the guy that can keep all those people together and understand that I got to put a little bit more over here. I need to be hands off over there. That I have to treat players differently to get them motivated to be on just getting paid. Coaching. Oh, see, is. see, I get. I, Oh my! I, I get what you're trying to do here. What am I, I trying what to do? Trying to do here. What? What? You're trying to add as many different pieces into this discussion as you can to it's muddy a, the no, waters. No, 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 no. See, right. I, I count, See, no, hold on. We talk about. We talk. Wait. No, no, no. Come on now. Come on now. Here we go. You ready? Okay. Number two. Number two. And let's go with number five. Number two, number two, and number five. All right. Okay. So number two, number two, and number five is where I'm going to come back and say Mike McCarthy was not the number two defense in points given up in a Super Bowl year. Okay. Mike McCarthy was not the number two in interception takeaways. Mm-hmm that year nor was he the number five overall yardage given up defense that year total no, yardage but wasn't that more of a complete team than what he had than what Aaron Rodgers well although I will say uh, the last couple of years it seemed like when you had Devontae Adams and uh, oh I'm your sorry back, I'm sorry wasn't he an or offensive coordinator for New Orleans New Orleans San Francisco then he was Green Bay head coach now he's Dallas head coach and he's got watch your wait, voice change now he's got Dallas now he's got now he's got Dan Quinn running his defense at what point has he run the defense that won no, the no, Super but see, Bowl but because hold on. the but passing see, oh, offense but see you're looking at the head coach dip wrong. The head coach is not the guy making the, the suit. Coach does the press conference. The head coach is the guy that should be putting people in places to succeed, to delegate it. It's like a CEO of a comp of a company. The oh, CEO so you think he you see you think he drafted Aaron Rodgers? No. Okay. No. He, so he he wanted Alex Smith. That was where the problem became between the two of them because he was part of San Francisco and wanted Alex Smith. And Aaron Rodgers did not want to go to Green Bay. He's a Cali guy. So what you okay? So let me ask you this. Okay. Let me ask you this right now. Okay. Have you ever heard of this guy named Joe Philbin? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Offensive line now, coach. Just, just, just let it go. Just let it go. It was just a question. Okay. I am curious though if you've ever heard of this guy named Dom Capers. Yes. 
Okay, so you're going to tell me, you're, you're going to tell me that that Mike McCarthy or look, I'll give you, I'll give you one more. You want, you want the win on this one? I'll give you the win. No, I don't have to have the win. Aaron Rodgers wasn't idiot. even the damn reason we won that Super Bowl. Oh, go ahead. What was the reason? The the reason? The yes. reason would be I don't know some dumbass dude named Ben Roethlisberger throwing interceptions in the damn end zone. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Moving moving but right along. The defense was so good that we were able to win that Super Bowl on the back of a defense Did, and a didn't good I just say that you had a balance. great defense? I I could have sworn I said that you had a great defense then. Right, but Mike McCarthy didn't have nothing to do with how Dom Capers ran the defense. Is okay. what I'm getting. At. All right. Okay. And in the same respect. He won't have a damn thing. His hands. Oh, will I don't never want, touch I, Dan I, Quinn. I, I don't want him to. But he still talks to Dan Quinn, and he understands this is a thing that I don't need to touch and fuck with. Okay, moving right along. As we come, we're coming down the home stretch here. Okay, we we, we might. Oh, actually, we only had one more question. Micah Parsons. That one hurt. I don't even know if I could handle it. Micah Parsons versus LT. To this point in their careers, that if Micah Parsons, because here's where I can say, Alden Smith, who was incredible his first couple of years in football, got to 30 sacks in 27 games, which beat Reggie White. But longevity is a problem. He ended up having all kinds of issues off the field that derailed his career. If Micah Parsons' body holds up and he continues to play, he will be better than Lawrence Taylor in his career. Am I an idiot? You're an idiot! You know, there's, there's famous words... Before I answer that question, mm -hmm. there's famous words that were spoken. Someone once said, why don't you compare him to Bruce Smith? Yeah, I, that somebody said that. Who, who said that? Was that you? That was a New York stinking Giants fan. Okay. Well, I think because they, they, they don't want to have. Was that Rashid? But Bruce Smith, the thing is, is Bruce Smith is a defensive end. Now, granted, right, see, that's the problem with Michael Par Micah Parsons. Now, Well, then that will bring me to the second question here on that. Okay, maybe the second question is where I'm about to go okay. with saying so, you're not necessarily an idiot. So you here's the thing. On the dum -dum side. Here's the reason why when you look at it, you can talk about, like, you know, greatest players of all time. You know, you can look at Michael Jordan and some people would say uh, LeBron James and so on. There's that argument. But they played – kind of d different spots and this Who's is where lebron okay forget okay moving right along i heard of here's Jordan. the he thing on a US here's team. the argument that i have because people say you can't compare micah parsons to lt because lt changed the game wasn't he a receiver michael jordan he was on the because us because lt they had to game plan for him and he changed games and here's what I'll say, because we hadn't seen linebackers or, you know, linebackers that were really more edge rushers with the speed that he had to be able to do the things that he did. I will say that Micah Parsons is similar in that he is changing the game because you've never seen a player who can rush from the edge as well as cover receivers that he can literally go from almost anywhere that teams now have to game plan it and he will be the prototypical type of player that guys will look for in the future. Giovanni and Clowney, when he came out, he became the prototypical defensive end. You're looking for guys that were leaner, faster, and stronger that could get to the quarterback. Unfortunately, he had injuries that kind of slowed and derailed his career. But you have to look at him as a sea change for what defensive ends became. And now you look at Micah Parsons and you say, this guy is taking it to a whole nother level. He's not just a linebacker, but he's also that, that edge rusher. He is kind of the hybrid multi-person you know, player that at this trajectory, 10 year, 12 year career could be scary. Oh, damn. You got me. Idiot. Am I an idiot? 
No, you you got me on that one. Because not- as a statistician and an you know, I, I do analysis for uh, you know for my for my job, right? Yes. And rule number one is never extrapolate. Um, <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so you know you want to go ten years down the road if he's still doing this, he's going to be the greatest of all time. Okay. Um, but here's my rebuttal. All right. Okay, because I got to rebut that. While he is a weapon, and while he is uh, unique at this juncture, Mm -hmm. what he's doing on the field, you know what, I'm not even going to say it that way. I'm going to ask you a question, Uh and I want you to make my point You can't ask me a question because I'm... You're an idiot! An idiot. Right, but I, but you're gonna make my point for me. That's why I use the idiot here. So when when y'all neutralized Aaron Donald, what did I tell you you did? What did we do? We ran right at him. No, he didn't. Oh no! Basically, I'm sorry. We ended up. Um, excuse me. We ended up focusing on everybody else and doing one. You see, you should have hit your button for that one. Because I'm in. You're an idiot. <laughs> but you neutralized it, mm-hmm. right? What did Philly do in the first half before they lost Lane Johnson to Michael Parsons? They neutralized him. How did they neutralize him? They were running at him. No. Oh, they had Lane they Johnson on him. Oh, what? The button again. Jeez. They You're were running idiot. away from him. Yes. They yeah. ran away from him. Every play was a bootleg or mm-hmm. a shift or a sweep. Yes. Everything to allow Michael Parsons. Yes. We're scheming against you, Micah Parsons, but we're scheming against you by eliminating you from the play. Mm-hmm. So, yes, you're changing the game, but didn't you just do that to Aaron Donald the week before? Yes. So. But now, that's where, uh, unfortunately. Wait, Miles Garrett. You ever heard of that dude? No, I never heard of him. Joey Bosa. Nick Bosa? No, 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 no. Uh, Nobody. No. Patrick Willis. Do they Fred play for Warner. the Cowboys? Because they don't Luke play for Keekly. the Cowboys. I don't know. I mean, are. seriously, it's not, I'm not arguing. Okay, <laughs> let me take a breath. Okay. I'm not arguing that Micah Parsons, extrapolated mm-hmm. over the period of 10 years, Yes. will be epic. Mm-hmm. What I'm extrapolating, or what I'm, what I'm, what I'm not extrapolating is what he's done now through those 10 years. Me personally, it, it, it kills me on the inside. Uh Oh, a little piece of you dies. Right. Well, it's, it's dead. It's gone Mm -hmm. because one, he graduated from the same school as my wife. Mm -hmm. All right. So he's one of those nitpicky lions. And number two, he plays for the Cowboys. Because this guy coming out. Yes. All right. We hadn't we hadn't discussed a guy like this since we were looking at the Clay Matthews and 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 guys, you know, when they had like the Georgia style defense back in the day before. Mm-hmm. And those guys individually were not as good. They were they were the Georgia style of a group of guys working better together. So we haven't even discussed a guy coming out like this. So him coming out and then going to y'all, well, that that just killed a piece of me on the inside. But um, that tells you how much of a fan of his that I am. And if he can even be a, a, a fraction of what he is now mm-hmm. for 10 years or more. That's scary. That's Hall of Fame material with or without a Super Bowl ring. All right. Okay. So I will give you that, but I will not extrapolate data that doesn't exist in this universe. Gotcha. All right. With that, we actually have run a little bit long on here because, you know, Mark Holmes, well, he's a... You're an idiot! And I've got to say, I thoroughly enjoyed this and hope this is going to be something that we do in the future on a regular basis. Go ahead. How many questions was it? There was actually five questions. All right, so was it three to two or was it four to one? I, I don't know how many I won. It wasn't. Well, I, I think I only got an idiot once. Oh. 
I mean, it's a competition, right? Yeah, no, it's not a competition. It's just everything. It's a discussion right? to make sure that. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Are you not entertained? I Is will tell you. you that if, you, <laughs> if Dallas wins the Super Bowl this year. What? Yes, I said that. If uh -huh. anybody, look, anybody can. If if they do win the Super Bowl this year, I can tell you that it is a combination of every single thing that has been put together right now between the players, the coaches, and just, I mean, the schedule is part of it. Mm -hmm. I hate to say y'all got a shot, but. So you're looks, telling me there's not, a chance. Yes! <laughs> and with that, we are out. I'll see you guys soon.